Good morning, folks. Who can guess what we're looking at? If you guessed Albany, Georgia, you're either psychic or you've been watching us quite some time. More electrical land formations using nothing but the discharge to work the magic. This is Billy in our lab. We start with a flat ridge of sand on a plate, and we just let the current flow. He aimed for lower undulating features as opposed to the desert chimneys we've easily produced and indeed heat fused together in previous runs. We're just getting started. As of this morning, there's a comet that ceases to be. She was small, barely came in without being detected. This is Soho Lasco C2 used to capture the disintegration. Visibility was almost nada on the C3. Almost. The tropical lows switched their power and chances of getting a name with the Indian Ocean storm strengthening slightly and the West Pacific low staggering a bit out of the gate. To the southeast of our current view lies rain in northern Australia, another band coming across the south, with a larger concern with that low still stuck at New Zealand, the cyclone remnants now not much more than a nuisance. Quite calm in Europe. Watch the spin bottom right. Precipitation continues along that north cloud line a bit, but the chance for thunderstorm revealed as the pressure overlay shows that low still standing on the sea there. In the US, Yes, we have another snowstorm crossing the north, but I'd like to focus this morning on the Gulf. That system will build all day, could flood parts of Florida or Georgia, drop some significant storms as well. We'll quickly start space weather, updating the M-Flare and CME. Yesterday we showed NASA's endless spiral, but NOAA here now confirming impact tomorrow night. It will be quite weak, we may not even detect it. Oh boy, let's take the sunspots one quadrant at a time. Starting north departing, we witness no complexity, but perhaps that double negative lead is of interest, scoffing at the rules of electromagnetism. Might want some personal space. South of that, we have bulging leviathans of active regions, but where's the delta? We got a couple of candidates in those leading baby groups, but now it's the elder group behind, actually, with the best chances blue spikes back into red. South incoming is tiny, and unmixed, not much of a concern. I'd say the same up north, but that leading divided triple negative umbra may actually break apart in the coming days. As of this time, it looks like the inner planets all share this segment of the sun for a magnetic connection. But notice that Venus and Mercury have dotted outer circles where Mars and Earth are solid. Dotted means it's a backside connection. That's how they denote that you're supposed to see through the sun and know that the connection is back there. Well, as for Earth and Mars, they are on those spots facing Earth, but a lack of flaring has not produced any of the significant polar radiation events we'd worry about. A quick point about the weak coronal hole stream that hit Earth last night. We always have a leading density shock ahead of the speedier particles. The fast ones are the coronal stream, but not the density. This is just the slower particles bunched up ahead of the faster ones, like a shovel with snow. You see it also below in green, how we don't ramp plasma temperature until the speed comes. The density shock is a space weather factor like any interplanetary shock, but it's not part of that energized actual stream. Meanwhile, We've been under the influence of the positive green coronal hole, but it was blocked by the umbral fields of the new sunspots. During its Earth-facing position, we took only a few six-pointers as opposed to the major uptick we saw last week when the coronal hole was not blocked. We're also seeing activity across the Pacific, Argentina, Chile, but now it's exiting, and a southern negative opening again comes in to face Earth. She's almost got Earth within her grasp. There's almost no chance of getting all the way through today while still under wholly positive influence. Also remember, that current exit in Corona Hole lost most of its power due to the umbral fields of the new sunspots. However, we see its peak of power green as a baseline in the south, hot points of the utmost force you can see pegged in between. The dark coming in down south, that's our opening here in 211 angstroms. If I hadn't watched and tracked the solar magnetic weakening and journey towards grand minimum for years, I'd be baffled at the quiet flaring with that amount of sunspots, but it is what it is, and it just so happens that the ultra quiet is what we're expecting. Current conditions and shots of our star to close. Eyes open, no fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.